Coming. My name is Victor Scholtesek. I work for a company called Ravel as a cloud architect. Um, and this talk is about just this tool, ChatGPT, and actually some other AI tools uh, for how you could use it to enhance your productivity in Java. And I, I've never been as excited about a tool that's increased my workload as much as this one. Uh, the reason I like coming to this meetup, everyone that I've, meet, I've met here is like loves coding. I used to like, I've been coding since I was like, uh, I think 10. Um, if I get lost on a creative problem, like, you know, I could, I could just code for 12 hours nonstop. I get in the flow. Uh, it's a lot like building Lego. Like it, it sometimes it blows my mind that people pay for building Lego. Like you pay and like you do all this work. But in a way it's a lot like coding where yeah, it's just fun. Like you, you, you get into the flow, and that's what I love. Like if if you give me this flow, I'll I'll work for uh, sixty hours. But then I'm as I'm sure a lot of you guys know, especially as you get more and more senior. Uh, maybe if you're dealing with legacy code, maybe you're, you're dealing with politics, really weird bugs, uh, things get in the way. Um, you guys want to throw out like any type of like your your really annoying things that you have to do at work that's not fun creative, anything? One line email that takes an hour to reply to. Yep, one line emails, TPS cover letters, uh, tedious errors, troubleshooting, etc. So this is what I wanted everyone to think of is like, what is this tedious work? This tedious mundane work. And is there some tools? that work absolutely great for this type of work. And yes, yes there is, AI to the rescue, the little icon over there is the chat GPT icon. Um, I've been coding, I think the first language I programmed on was QBasic on a 286, I know it was a long time ago. There's never been a tool, like between mem managed memory, like in IntelliSense, ReSharper, uh, Cloud, I have never met I have never met a tool that has boosted my productivity and I've been able to pick it up so quickly as AI and specifically ChatGPT. And to summarize it for uh, the people that haven't used it, and this is this is also why I don't really worry about it taking over my job, but the the quickest summary of ChatGPT is really just a chatbot you talk to it and it's just predictive text. It's super smart predictive text. It's not going to create anything new, but it's, it's read all of GitHub, it's read a lot of books, and it could tell you it does a really good job at predicting. And the best way, I, f I found just telling people about ChatGPT, I tell them about this tool and they don't use it, and like I've been telling people about it for the last six months. But the way that I've really been able to convince people to use it is by actually showing them how it works, like actual real prompts. And this is like when you talk about AI and ChatGPT and some of the other ones, you talk about prompts. And it's really just the message you give ChatGPT to answer. So I did want to make this a little bit interactive. Like I showed a whole, I put in a whole bunch of prompts that we're going to go through and try out. But if you guys want me to change it up, or uh, you know, uh, give ChatGPT something even more complicated. Uh, like by all means, just tell me. Put your hand up. Also, what time? How much time do I have um, until eight? I think right. The, the next thing is. Uh, all right, I got time. Um, first thing, ChatGPT. I don't use uh, Stack Overflow anymore. Uh, even Google. I like. I don't understand why I would go to Google for little problems to solve and like click search and then click through the first five pages and then like try to find where I am and then like read through the Wikipedia entry trying to find everything. Just basic information, like that's kind of the first thing I, you, you learn about ChatGPT is just super basic information lookup. Um, all right, like this is what it does. And here's just like a super simple prompt as my Stack Overflow replacement. 
Um, yeah, like I, I, haven't, I haven't actually coded in Java since Java 11. I just want to know what's new. How long would this take you nowadays? A little bit of browsing. One second. So we're going to cut and paste it. If you've never used ChatGPT, that's kind of what it looks like. There's a, it's just a chatbot, and you paste your stuff in. There's, um, there's two versions. One of them's free. One of them is. Oh yeah. So by the way, if you've never used it, it's, it's actually free. You just need to, I think, provide your cell phone number. There's a slightly better paid version. It's the 4.0. And there you go. Code snippets. Everything's ready to go. Since Chef 11, here's all the things that were added. Here's a little code snippets. Just like that. Still pretty basic. I know. It's like, oh, wow, OK, glorified Google search. That's OK. Um, another problem I ran into a couple of months ago, because I know, uh, I think you were asking, what, what question did you ask about Dynatrace? Was it Dynatrace? Oh, yeah, like do a comparison between like different products. Right? So you could say like, what's, like, what's the advantage of Datadog, or do a comparison between what's, Datadog? So, so instead of this one, so I wanted to, I had a real life situation with a client where Spring Boot was too heavy for Lambda. But instead, let's do the data dog one. So I know you're an architect and you want to, um, I don't have monitoring for my Java app. I am looking at either, what was it Dynatrace, data dog, or Dynatrace. Um, what else do you want to know about it? Give me, give me the, Pros and cons, costs. What else do we want to know about it? Anything else? All right. Easy to set up. Pros and cons. Easy to set up. I mean, yeah, I was going to tell you to use Datadog anyways. <laughs> uh, all right. If, if you, um, actually, the other great thing with uh, ChatGPT is it understands the thread. You could do follow up questions. So now, if I forced you to pick one, which one would it be? Um, and then it also like it also helps with context. Like I'm assuming this is a startup. I, mean, I know if I say startup, it's probably going to say one small company. Small new company. Legacy code. Some legacy code. What's it going to do? Usually, uh, it's the internet. It's, uh, is the internet working? It's working. Usually it works. Okay, the internet's kind of slow here. Um, it's, uh, the signal's weak. I would lean towards Datadog. There's your answer. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it works great. Like, I've saved so much time where you get into these silly discussions at work of like, I know, uh, I think I had one about tabs versus spaces. And instead of like, discussing any further, it's like, all right, I'll just have a chance to <laughs> pick it. Um, other lookups, a uh, great book, Continuous Delivery by Jess Humble. Eh, but I don't want to go to the library and borrow it. Just give me the summary and give me um, what I could use from this book. Great. Like, uh, for summarizing content, like any type of content you give it, and you could, you could cut and paste. Like if you have a, like a, an essay and you, you don't want to read the essay and you just want to know what's in it, you could just paste the essay in and summarize it. But also books, I think it has, it's read a lot of books, um, and I'll tell you everything. Like, here's your Cole's notes. Like, the industry of Cole's notes is done, because ChatGPT does it for you. I mean, uh, and then, yeah, great book. So here's the summary. I could tell it, uh, make it shorter. Ask it to do it in a sequence of tweets. Uh, do it now. 
Okay, now summarize it in three paragraphs in Dr. Zeus, <laughs> Zeus format. Um, in the world of software, also grand comes a book called Continuous Delivery, <laughs> so planned. Uh, th this one, this Dr. Zeus, you could tell it how to output uh, Dr. Zeus and Shakespeare um, do it in French. Um, like the translation industry, like if anyone here has a side hustle of translating, like, I'm sorry, like, <laughs> you're done. Like, translating and copywriting. Uh, so it does understand, um, I don't know what the limit is of languages, but like even, like I speak Polish and even, like I've, I send, like my, my Polish is really bad, but I've just started sending emails to people. I write them in English, <laughs> translate to Polish, and like, wow, your, your Polish has gotten so much better. <laughs> uh, so translate, like even, even translation, this is so much better than anything else you could get, and free. Uh, all right, so it, it it's great for the lookup, but as you start using it, you'll learn that it does so much more. Um, and it's, it's this crafting code and content in any language, like programming languages and regular languages. Uh, so it's kind of this, this little AI that if you tell it what to do, and, and it helps to be specific, um, it'll do whatever. And I mean, I, I didn't want to fit in too much code, but um, if you have like a snippet of code, you give it your Java code, you could tell it to just tell me what it does in French if I wanted to, offer any suggestions and rewrite it in Python. It is, it, it doesn't work, I, I haven't figured out the wor right workflow and there's other tools like Copilot for if you have more than a snippet, um, but especially if you just have like one file, uh, it works really well. So one file, um, I, Writing code snippets. Like every so often, I'll, I'm working on a problem, and yeah, like I have the big picture in my, in my brain, but you have these generic things that you know have been done forever, and you just want, like somewhere there exists in GitHub something similar to the solution. So you want that snippet created. You don't want to do it. Like you're, you're kind of reinventing the wheel. I'm sure somebody's already coded uh, a multi-threaded um, web scraper in Java. I did want to get more specific, so I added like, all right, let's use the Java class and uh, add a Gradle build script, add a GitHub action script, and let's see what it does. And I, I will comment about the difference between 3.5 and 4. 4 is the one that um, you pay, it's $20 a month, it's a steal. Um, for smarter, like more creative work like this, I'll typically default to four. So if, if anyone's wondering what the difference is. Um, here you go. And it's like, put your uh, Java code here, copy paste it. Uh, it'll give me the, the Gradle script, it'll give me the, the GitHub action script, it'll tell me where to put it. It's all nicely colored. I could do follow-up questions of like, oh, I don't know, change the name to this. Um, yeah, just like that. The shocking thing is that it generated the import statements before the code. It's like already kind of knew what was going to happen. I don't, I don't know what the law, I, I don't know how it does it behind the scenes, but yeah. the, but it's the snippet, like it saves me time like, it won't do the big picture stuff, but this random one-off, I think the other day, I needed a, a couple of weeks ago, I needed a GitHub action for some really weird thing. Instead of spending time going on Stack Overflow and looking up the documentation, I just told it to write me this GitHub action script that did this. Uh, so that's, that's amazing. Um, Here's a deeper one. Like you, you could start getting pretty advanced. I think we could kind of see that the code, uh, it, it does generate code, but you could start like telling it which libraries to do, what you, I want a Rust endpoint, I want a SOAP endpoint. Like the more you give it, like this isn't just copying, oh, like it found something on GitHub that did a multi-threaded um, web scraper. Like it's 
it knows what the differences are, and the more specific you, you go, it'll do it. Uh, so this is a bigger, and actually note the last line where it's like, oh, and tell me a brief explanation of each component and recommendations for performance optimizations and scalability. Um, oh, this, this one, like this, uh, somebody said email generation. <laughs> nice. Uh, such a time saver, because I, I do find like, you know, you get emails, maybe some of them are long, but you gotta like, oh, well, like it's, it's, to, uh, it's to the client, so I gotta like proofread it. I gotta like make sure it's, it's, it's good. I gotta maybe sneak in some buzzwords about customer values and like, uh, or if it's my non-technical PM, I gotta like explain the right wording. Like it, I find these emails suck up time. And even if I know in my head what the answer is, just putting it down in a legible way can take some time. Um, it, I would say it, it helps get the non-technical people off your back a bit. Um, so here you go, dear PM's name, and I could say like, oh, uh, oh, by, by the way, the PM's name is Mr. Smith, and oh, and I always. I've, I've noticed that people can, I could tell when people use ChatGPT, but you could kind of train it on what you sound like, either by giving it your emails to like, here's my email, try to kind of match the format. Or like, if, if I don't like it, I'll just say, I always end emails in cheers, Victor. Um, so you, you could like rewrite it and you could tell it like maybe shorter, maybe whatever, and just iterate over it. And there you go. Like, how long would this email have taken somebody proofread for a client? You know, the research, combing it, boom, done. Um, <laughs> the, the, this, this one, uh, it's, it's too bad uh, not everyone is here. Um, I've been collecting these notes. I've, I've, I've had this thought for a, uh, for a talk about Scala. Like, anyone here coded in Scala? Not yeah, money. <laughs> um, I've had this thought about co co um, comparing Scala to the Backs of the Future car, like the DeLorean, and how they're both overhyped with no actual value. <laughs> and I've been collecting notes, like completely unstructured notes of like, I don't know, the DeLorean was like overly expensive, no one really used it, it fell apart all the time, just like Scala. Do a c comparison and contrast completely rough and unstructured notes. It was just my notes. And I've never had the time to sit down, take those notes, and create a, a blog post out of it. Until one day I was like, I, I wonder if I could just take this unstructured data and write it for me. And yeah, um, I don't have the notes here with me, but even this, I could take this content, and, and I would, for this, this type of more creative stuff, I would, again, use ChatGPT4. And go. Blog wow. post. Like, I, I'm starting to think that like any like blog writing is done. Like generic blog, like not creative, but like generic blog writing. Like, I, I don't know why I would ever waste time Right, and like you still have to put down what to say, but this, this type of writing, like this type of blog post would have taken me a weekend to write and like edit and, and, and whatnot. Um, it was a little, I mean, my version was a little bit better because I had like all these um, uh, notes of like the specific facts and uh, references that I want to use. But even now, like, yeah, um, here's an entire blog post you can just copy paste. And maybe if you wanted, like, uh, I want to post this on my blog. Give me some SEO tips, uh, search engine optimization tips. I could do that too, to, to drive viewership. Like, I, I don't know, like I, I feel like even, I, I don't trust what's being like online nowadays. Like, I don't know what's being written by bots and what's actually written by people. Um, but yeah. Here, I'll give you search engine optimization tips for that blog post. Uh, but I, I, I remember 
when I gave it, gave it my unstructured notes and just realized that like, unlike regular, like it was just such a paradigm shift of like, unlike anything else in programming or, you know, it has to be like conformed to this uh, XML format. And like, if, if you miss something, it'll just, everything will blow up. It works so well with like broken unstructured data. Like I've, I've had to clean up notes, my rough notes, just like here are my notes, summarize it for me in like one page. Um, uh, your personal coach in tech or tech or in anything, actually I use it for everything, not just tech, but I want to focus on tech. Um, another thing that kind of helps people is this, this framing of like telling chat GPT who to act as. So, I mean, you're, you essentially kind of have a free personal coach, like these coaches that you pay I don't know, hundreds of dollars for and don't always know the answer and take time to reply to you. Like you have a personal coach and like any type of situation, you could just ask for advice. Like here's my situation uh, in this way. is like, I don't know, I have a tech lead that's stubborn and reinventing the wheel and rewriting all the code, creating too many microservices and tanking actual business value. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, I, like I'm not even looking for an answer. It's like, just, just, I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to say. Script it out. Give me a game plan. Um, or does anyone have any other problem they want to try? All right. As your uh, personal CTO uh, coach, uh, take a balanced approach. Yeah, I mean, like, old me would have been like, no, don't do that. But now uh, I'm a lot better at you hear them out. And uh, but the the advice that it gives you, like it's it's read. I'm sure it's read, read a ton of management books, leadership books. The advice that I've gotten is it's like it's it's accelerated my uh, like my leadership and management skills. Communicate the business perspective. Provide concrete examples. This is what you what I want you to say. I also use this for going into meetings. If I'm like going completely blind into a meeting, I'll take the abstract, paste it in, tell it what my role is, tell it who's going to be in the meeting, and just say like, "All right, tell me what to do. Tell me what questions to ask." Um, like bigger, like you, you can start getting into these bigger strategic thinking things of like. I don't know, like I'm spearheading major refactoring. I don't know what to start. Tell me where to start. Uh, provide me some strategy. It helps, like, I, I will say that typically my prompts are a lot bigger than this. Like I, I give it time, like I, it doesn't do the work for me. I spend a lot of time telling it what I want and trying to like piece together uh, the information that I want to give it plus the information that I want to get back. So it's still a lot of work, but like, it just summarizes it like it does all the little stuff in the middle uh, much better. Um, this one was kind of cool. I, I've, I've done this for someone where um, we have a Java development team. How do I like foster an uh, environment that encourages creativity, experimentation, and continuous learning? Um, just like give, give me these strategies. Like even as a starting point, it's not always, it's rare that I'll, I'll get input and it's, it's what I want to use exactly. But even as starting points for conversations, uh, let's go, all right, like, who doesn't want to have a better, better work environment? Set clear visions and goals, encourage autonomy. I mean, um, and now I could ask more about like those bullets, like, I don't know, tell me more about what I can do about Autonomy, bullet. Um, what else can we say? Uh, I struggle because my um, architects are overly prescriptive. Anyone ever have this where it's like I want to I I want autonomy, but. Uh, I have some like higher level architects that have no accountability, but they just shove practices down. This is what you could do. Um, 
and you can like keep going, like keep iterating over of, okay, well, I don't like this, or here's some more context. You could keep iterating over your answers, like treat it as like a conversation bot. It's not a one-off Google search. Like it knows, and you keep digging in, digging out, giving analogies. Um, yep. Uh, excelling at mundane tasks. I mean, this is really what ChatGPT is good at, and this is why, like, I, I, I mean, I remember at first when I started clicking how good it was, I was a little bit afraid of my job. I was like, oh no, like I'm gonna have to get into trades. Uh, but once you start seeing that it, it's really good at the things it knows, because it has a data set, it's been trained on the data set, and it could only predict off of its data set, off of things that have been done a lot of times. Like, it's the mundane, tedious tasks that it's really good at. Um, the, the absolute, like, one of my favorite things to use this for is, like, difficult conversations. Uh, so, like, like, heated conversations where it's easy to, to, to maybe say something that you shouldn't to a client or maybe, like, you, you got to, like, spin PR speak. I take an email. So this is, like, I don't know, you have a client that's complaining. It's easy to, like, reply back and say something like, no, it's user error, you don't know what you're doing. But generating like these really nice emails. Um, what, what else do we want to do with the email? I also like, I, I like telling it sometimes just for fun. I will tell it to like uh, add buzzwords. So like make sure to include uh, synergies. <laughs> and customer is always right. Um, there you go. Um, yeah, your, your feedback is valued. I mean, you could tell it the client's name. Sorry, in the message I could have said, like, my client's name is X. Um, my name is Victor. Um, and there you go, there's your email. I have, I've, I've, there's been times where I don't even read emails. No, not at work, but uh, with, uh, you could, you could get it to generate the postmortem for today's GitHub average. I could. <laughs> then there's a way. Um, but actually, sorry, this is, like, this, this is one of the first things that I, I tell people to look into, is when you have a, con oh, actually, conversation threads. Where, um, has anyone seen the South Park episode on uh, ChatGPT? Um, highly recommend it. This is one of the things that, actually, that's the other thing that I find helps sell people on ChatGPT is that episode. Uh, but I, anyways, one of the kids has, has an annoying girlfriend that text messages all, him all the time. So he just takes her messages, copy paste them into ChatGPT, and sends back the responses. <laughs> so you could start a thread. You could, theoretically speaking, um, oh, my, my wife isn't going to watch this so I can see it. But I know I've never done this with my wife. Uh, but you could theoretically have an iMessage conversation, open up a new chat window, and just say like, uh, I got this text message from X, craft a reply. Okay, now I got this message back, craft a reply. And like, you just go through that chat window of a back and forth conversation, and it'll understand the context and it'll remember. Uh, so even for like little text messaging, it's, uh, it's hilarious, especially once you start like, from time to time, for fun, I'll just you know, like write in Dr. Zeus, write in a poem, or translate it just to, or um, write, write like a three-page essay. I've, I've done this once where um, I think somebody emailed me, and I saw the message come in, so immediately I went to ChatGPT and said, create a three-page three personalized response, and clicked respond within 10 seconds. Um, and it was, it was kind of entertaining. They're like, wow, you're, you're amazing. Uh, I, I, thought, I thought this was funny. I couldn't be a talk without a TPS, a software talk without a TPS cover letter. Um, so draft a TPS cover letter for a software project, include all these buzzwords. Because um, I, I guess it's this busy work. Like I, I do find with seniority, sometimes there is busy work imposed. And this thing like eliminates busy work 
of certain out eliminates drastically, drastically reduces the amount of busy work. Uh, so same thing. All right, like, whoops. Uh, yeah, just like create my create my TPS uh, cover letter, and there you go. And I could have given it my background, but like, this is when I put my cover letter TPS on my cover letter. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? It's not about microservices because of context. Pardon me. It was annoyed with microservices because of context there. <laughs> Uh, so so great for this like with this busy work. Um, oh, uh, I, I've it's it's helped me with with breaking down stories. So I do find like you get into like uh, you know PM planning and you have like stories and you need to break them down and write out the stories and you have your notes of what needs to be done, but you just need to split it up and like easier to write and like PM speak, um, like like this this BA PM work it helps quite a bit. Um, so I mean, in this case, here's this component that I want to build. Just create the user stories for me. I'd probably give it even more context. I'm assuming, like, if if, if this is real, I'd say I don't know, like, here are my like constraints. Here's what's already been done. Here's what I'm running on. Uh, but yeah, it does. Like the PMBA stuff, it's great because it's it's just written stuff. Uh, dowsing, debugging. Flames, like whenever I have a problem, I like to default to Chad GBT and just ask it, like, what do I do? Like, I don't know, like normally I'd go to Stack Overflow or Google. Uh, I find this is a lot quicker, like especially if you just give it an error type. Um, like here's the error, here's my background, tell me what to do, give me a game plan. Um, give, me, give, me, give me a game plan for my PM so that he's not stressed out that the servers are down and he knows that I know what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, just giving it errors. If you're stuck, just go in, like type the error in. It does a great job. Um, other like, you know, performance issues, like uh, I don't know, uh, who hasn't run out of memory on Java, but like how do I like, where do I start? I'm running out of memory in Java, where do I start? Order your suggestions in order of importance. Which items do you think I should tackle first? And then maybe give it some context. Like the context helps. So I mean, maybe there's something in WebSphere in Java 8 that we would know about. Uh, so that is something I learned pretty quickly with ChatGPT is give it as much context as possible. Um, refining with follow-ups. I kind of demoed some of the stuff, but it's it's not just the one-off questions like Google. It's the having that threaded conversation of like, okay, I, I like what you gave me, but now I know give me three short bullet points. Make sure to include the word synergies. Um, I do find that ChatGPT by default is very like formal, where people will know, especially if you're very casual. And now all of a sudden your your emails are like filled with cliches and like jokes and like words you don't use, like. The default is very formal, uh, so I like to just say, like, you know, make it sound very casual, make it sound like a like we're friends, don't use these phrases, iterate over it. Um, I like this thing, uh, not just for, um, like, at work, but the explain something to a 10-year-old. Like, I, I have a 6-year-old, and sometimes, like, she'll ask, like, well, what is, what is, what's X? I'm like, I don't, I don't know how to explain this, because I, I'll just ask ChatGPT, like explain, I think, chaos. I think recently it was like explain chaos to a six-year-old and it will figure it out. And then uh, you could always tell it to like add jokes, which I find funny. Uh, this, this one was good. Um, going back to like <laughs> framing, framing the output, and I always like the speech at the end of Independence Day because I find it really inspirational. So I was like, what could I... Um, which talk? Let's go through one of my. Which message do we want in? The 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 customer is angry about the the late delivery. <laughs> okay, so you could so you could edit messages. You could go back and edit them. Mm -hmm. um, all right, do it. Actually, this isn't. Actually, this isn't that good. 
I think it's, I don't know, I didn't miss it? Maybe just ask it again in the follow-up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the lights did. <laughs> <laughs> we face a challenge, yeah. <laughs> Brief pause, look across the crowd, <laughs> fist in the air. <laughs> The crowd is, yeah. I, I like it, it's it's this stuff. Like, the more specific you are, like, like it just. It, I'm I'm kind of impressed even with this. Um, curtains fall. Thank you, thank you, my fellow architects of the digital age. Uh, but th but this follow up, like, um, I, I think like to summarize, it's like the more data you give it for what you want for what you want it to process, and the more data you give it of how you want the output to look the better. Um, like some of my prompts have been like, I actually work on the prompt for like a couple of hours of like cutting, cutting and pasting all my information in on all the contacts and I'll save it in my Apple notes and then I'll paste it in. Um, so they don't have to be short. Actually, the longer the better. A couple of like fine tips, uh, tips and fine tuning. Um, it's important to know this 3.5 versus 4 difference. So ChatGPT is free, which is how a tool this good can be free blows my mind. Uh, but I think part it's, it's partially because it's starting to get easy to replicate, but that's a different story. But um, for 20 bucks, and I highly recommend it, it's a steal. I'm not a salesman for ChatGPT in any way. I don't get commission. 20 bucks USD a month, you get 4.0 plugin support. And actually, the, the other big thing is 3.5. At least when I was using the free version, very often it'll just say like at capacity, at capacity. Um, you don't get that with when you pay the 20 bucks. Um, there's a limit, but there's a workaround. It's, it was trained on a data set from September um, 2021 and back. So if you ask it, tell me what the new, for, by default, with the new versions of like, I don't know, tell me about the latest version of Java released a year ago. It won't know. So it works great. Um, there is that gap in data. You can't ask it, I don't know, like what happened in the news yesterday? Except if you're paying the 20 bucks uh, and you pay for the web, web browser plugin, where it won't go to the data set, it'll go to Bing and searching Bing, and I'll give a demo, searching Bing, it'll try to figure out the answer for you. Um, uh, they just released the iOS apps a month ago, and they're actually really solid. Like, if you're going to get into it, just download the iOS apps. If, uh, I mean, fun, fun fact, fun tip, uh, and I know a lot of people do this, if your work is like, has a strict no chat GPT policy, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying <laughs> what to do. I'm just saying what people are doing is just hotspot off your cell phone on an iPad. Never put client sensitive information in, um, but that's what I would do. Uh, it, there is an important thing about security awareness, and I think this is why some, some of the banks and um, legal offices just ban it outright. Be aware that any data you sent is then added into the learning, it can be used for the learning data. Um, so don't put in sensitive client information. I'll, I'll completely anonymize things. I won't paste sensitive code in, but I could say like, I don't know, I'm working with a difficult client, um, do this. So just anonymize it and just make sure you're not uh, pasting in any like sensitive information. Um, yeah, I did mention the unstructured, unstructured data when it, clicked for me that it works so well because you're used to programming where everything needs to be structured. Like that was a huge, um, huge turning point. Uh, I said, again, you have to be specific. It's, it's a different paradigm than like Google where you, you want like a quick question. The more you give it, the better. Like just write entire essays, cop copy paste. Uh, that works really well. Uh, I mentioned the multi-language support. Um, I haven't hit either a spoken language or a programming language that I couldn't do. I mentioned the conversation thread. So actually what I do 
is uh, I could have like separate threads. I'll have separate conversation threads for, I know, like here's my life coach, here's my parenting thread, here's my this client thread. Like you could have different threads that know the context for that situation. Uh, so that's something I wanted to demo. Um, and just the experiment and iterate. Because I, I remember when I first played around with ChatGPT, I was like, eh, like it's just, it's not that special. But like the more you start using it and just throwing like, the amount of times where I was like, I don't, I don't think this is gonna work. There's no way, even with, with this, um, like being so specific as the Independence Day talk, I was like, I don't, I don't know if it's gonna be good. And then it just blew me away because I, I tried it out earlier. So, any, I've never run into a situation that I couldn't do. It's, there's been times I didn't know the data. That's one thing. But um, So what is the workaround for um, like recent data? So I created this prompt just for you. Oh, good. Um, so I, I run a Java user group meetup. Create the slides for, for the next meeting. Um, I'm going to go into four. There's this browse with Bing. It's a little bit slower, so it won't get the answer right away. But it knows that it won't have the data. So what it's going to do. It's going to search. I'm going to blame this on uh, the, the poor Wi-Fi. It, it, it will normally show you that I'm going to Bing. I did a search. I'm like iterating over the search results. Actually, I don't know where this is. Uh, let's try this again. Okay, Plugin, browse of Bing. Oh. oh it's still thinking. <sighs> Sometimes. Oh, there you go. So, like, it's not even going to its data set. Like it, it's just doing a Google, like a Bing search for you, consolidating the data. It, it, it'll take like, a, I think 30 seconds. It's not as um, um, quick, but it'll just do it for you. Can you go back and look at the first response? I wonder if it, is it on three of three button? Oh, I think it stopped. It's on page five. Yeah. But anyways, um, it, it can do with the paid version. If, if it has gaps in information, it'll, um, it will come back to it. Yeah. Uh, but that's worth the 20 bucks. Uh, what else? Oh, this one was good. So I was, um, I was looking at like, how do I create my presentation? I was like, I want images that are relevant to my talk. But I don't even know what the images would look like. And this is where, what I love with uh, synergies between <laughs> AI tools. Oh boy, I think I've uh, <laughs> um, When I was doing this talk, I was like, I, I don't have the images. Um, I don't want to go through like Google images and go through all the, um, uh, what are they called, the websites where they have uh, the stock photography ones where they have the little watermark. And they're always in the wrong resolution. And it takes a long time to find them. Um, I, like I needed relevant images. So first, firstly, I used ChatGBT. Oops. I've created a couple of one sentence visual descriptions that I could use um, to create the image. Actually, it's one second. <laughs> the top is the message that yeah. ChatGBT created for me for the image I wanted to use. And then actually the next thing was uh, there's another AI tool that I use. Uh, it's called Midjourney. ChatGPT saves me 99% of the work, but uh, the 1% for these little, and, and even in software, Midjourney is an app where you tell it via text of what you want an image of, and it'll go out and create it for you. Um, so now, Create a photorealistic image of a powerful bolt of lightning charging a Java cap with energy, cup with energies and circuits. I mean, that was what um, <laughs> this, this was uh, ChatGPT created. All my slides are ChatGPT mid journey created. 
um, based on the content. How, how many levels deep of inception are we going for? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's auto chat GPT for another talk. But, um, and then where this tool really shines is like the mock-up generation. So I mean like, it's, it's great for regular image creation. Like I don't know, I want a cat in cartoon style anime. It'll do that for you. But as a developer, just like why not like just give me some mock-ups? Like how much time are you like spending twiddling around with colors? Uh, my example is like give me a UI design of a real estate agency landing page, minimalistic, blue color palette on dribble, high resolution, like this is what it created. Um, and then like obviously you cut it, split it up, whichever you want, you could keep regenerating. Um, Icons, I hate making icons, and I don't like the default ones, but it's great at creating icons. Um, so I was working on a pharmacy app uh, oh, wow. a couple of months ago, and you can just tell it, like, here's where I want you to create, create the icons. I had, um, actually a second, does anyone here do uh, video game development? For fun. Um, I, I, I thought this was kind of impressive where give me 8-bit gaming medieval sprites if you're into gaming and like boom, like it'll just oh, create wow. it for you. And you could iterate over it and like keep regenerating. There's randomness component to it. Uh, future Outlook as a catalyst. Um, it's, it's out of the box. Like I hear all these news about like people wanting to clamp it down. Like once it's in the internet, especially with some of these alternative tools out like uh, Facebook's like no one's gonna stop AI no one's gonna stop these long language models like it's out you could download them some of them onto your machine like there's no there's no stopping it um, I worried a little bit about my job once it started clicking how good it was some jobs like I wouldn't I don't know if you're if your kids are in like like a paralegal job um, translating, copywriting, any type of like non-creative, just like here's the content, I just want you to make it look pretty, like that's done. Uh, trades are still safe. Um, I mean the creativity, like it, I still spend, I, I like to say that ChatGPT made this, it didn't, like it still took me time to like consolidate my notes and I try to ask it and frame it the right way. But you're still gonna need like the creative stuff and it's only, like what these models are only as good as their data sets. I've, it, it can't do new stuff. Um, I've really been thinking about this content transformation because if, if it's so easy for people to write blogs and like even review um, reviews online, I think I even heard something about the dead internet. Um, what's it called? The, the, the dead internet theory where people are tracking how even, even right now 50% of traffic is already bots, like fake reviews, fake blog posts, yeah. fake everything. Like the internet's just becoming uh, saturated with like this generated content. Um, this, this learning accelerator, both for, um, both for like, like for me, but like even for kids, like I don't even understand the education industry anymore because anything I want, like why would I sit in a, in a, a lecture where I could just break down, like, teach me about uh, AWS Lambda. All right, like, write some code snippets that show me how to use it. Tell me how do I set it up, like, for exploratory learning and even for uh, like parenting. Like, I massively use this for parenting. Of, um, like, give me a lesson plan for this. Explain this. Um, one one of my f my favorites. Is uh, does anyone here have kids? What a what age? Uh, uh, that's a little bit too old. But uh, one of my favorites nowadays is like because uh, my my daughter loves uh, Berenstein Bears, so it's create uh, Berenstein Bears story, uh, grade four vocabulary. Um, what else, what else can we put in? Um, 1,400 words where 
they meet Elon Musk, build rockets, rockets. Um, there's a moral to the story. Uh, add five reading comprehension questions. Um, what else? All right. And like even kids stories, like I, I like I don't understand why I would go to the library because I could create any story that I want for my for my uh, for my daughter. Like it's like and it's as good, if not better. Like it's especially these generic like like anyone. I mean, I like they're kind of generic st stories. Not to rip on the authors, but um, yeah, and I'm like. There's the story. Like anything your kid wants to learn, like um, it's it's pretty awesome. Word count. Um, oh, she was like, the word count was that reading comprehension. What were the? Oh, I can extend it. Yeah. So I mean, I I thought this was like kind of awesome. Um. Yeah. I mean, I do want to end on like the importance of AI literacy because it's it's I I see it as an enabler. But if you're not using it, like you're like you're handicapping yourself. Um, like you're like it'd be the equivalent of I don't know like 30 years ago. I don't know 30 years ago when personal computers came out, if people were dead set on like no, I'm not going to use a personal computer. I'm going to keep using a typewriter. Like that's fine, but uh, I you'd be shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, but anyways, that's the talk. Um,